Alright, so what's up? Um, I'm just gonna get right into it. I had the idea to do a uh, pick a card. Why is spirit isolating you? So, isolation, it doesn't have to be nothing negative, anything like that. It's like more so sometimes it's protection, and a lot of times we know the guy's protecting us or something, but maybe there's something a deeper purpose to it. Maybe something you're supposed to be doing during this time. And I feel like during everybody's spiritual journey, you're going to be isolated a few times. And sometimes it's not as easy to, to surrender to the isolation as other times where it could be. So let's see what the energy is in regards to like why. Why is spirit isolating you? What type of isolation are you going through? Because it could be like isolation from family. It could be isolation from like friend groups. I know a lot of people that are spiritual feel like it is hard to make friends in the beginning. Um, or really, I feel like it's hard to just assimilate with people. It's hard to like go along with things that, you know, for lack of other terms, it's kind of like I've killed off those versions of me that is interested in that type of shit. So it's like I can't even keep up on a certain conversation. Like, I don't know, certain reality shows I can't watch because it's like so low vibrational to me. Something like that, you know, that's kind of what I'm getting. Um, hold on. I'm going to turn all these parts upright because I want to take upright. So if it comes out in reverse, then we'll acknowledge it as such. But I'm really not just too keen on starting off with too many reverses. Guys, I feel like for those of you who choose this pal, some of you guys may feel like you may have a scarcity of surrounding certain food items. Like it could be that type of energy for you guys. Maybe it's like you can't afford to eat, like go out to eat or something like that. Uh, or maybe it's like maybe you're being like maybe certain things you can't eat anymore. This could be an isolation from a certain craving. Um, for some of you guys, it could be that. Uh, maybe spirit is urging you to make certain dietary changes for you all. Okay. Some of you guys may come from a family where they kind of, they tra traditionally eat a certain type of way. And you could just be the only person that has like a lot of... Uh, that could be something that people isolate from. Because maybe you don't like going to family events. Because you don't want to eat turkey. You don't want to eat certain things. This could be protection from certain like um, health concerns or health problems in the future. Uh, obviously, if you are somebody that's vegan in your whole family, you know, they have high blood pressure, diabetes, and all this other stuff, and you eat differently than you, and they treat you differently because you don't want, that you want to eat vegetables and they want to eat the food that's killing them, you know, you would understand why you would be blessed and not be around certain things because maybe it's difficult for you to watch it. Somebody here grows their own food too. I don't know. But let's see. Spirit, why are you isolating my views to select this path? Okay, some of you guys are not taking it well, this isolation. You could feel alone. Because I'm hearing uh, that song, John by John Redcorn. No, it's John Redcorn by Sir. I'm going to put that in the description box if I remember. If I forget, if somebody else typed it for me in the comment section and I'll pin it. It's Sir by John. It's, oh, it's John Redcorn by Sir. Okay, because I'm hearing alone. Every night alone. Why am I alone when I when I notice you want me to? Some of you guys are isolated from one that you're sweet on. I was wondering why I was um honing in on like this this donut right here. It's because something about something that you're sweet on, somebody you're sweet on, or it could be sweets in general that spirit is isolating you from. Somebody here could be pregnant and spirit could be like isolating you for certain like for food cravings, like some things that you want to do. Maybe you have like an eating disorder. Some of you guys are really health conscious. And maybe your body is making you want to eat more than what you, you want to eat. But this could be your spirit guide's way of telling you something different. Some of you guys, you guys are health nuts because some people in your family have certain health conditions. But maybe being pregnant is allowing you to have balance. Some of you guys are pregnant and you're craving things that you didn't want to eat. Some of you guys, your spirit guide saying it doesn't have to be an extreme one way. It could be 
somewhere in the middle and you're learning a happy medium with things. Some of you guys, it could be learning not to be so codependent on other people or partners and relationships. Why, ooh. Why are you isolated? Pow. Why spirit? Why are you isolating? Why are you just like this, pal? So, oh, real big energy. Y'all need to see this card. This lets me know there's a heavy on the codependency energy feeling. I heard there's wholeness in one. Like that one is a whole number. I don't even, is one a whole number in math? Hmm? Is one a whole number in math, 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 mathematics? I think so. Oh my God. But that's what I heard. One is a whole number. Look it up for me because I don't want to sound stupid as hell. Because <laughs> I never was good at math, but so I heard math is a, a one. Look, I heard one is a whole number. I don't know why I'm stuttering. Somebody here could have. I feel like somebody here is really cheesy. Not cheesy in a sense to where you're corny. You watch this. I feel like you're cheesy in a sense to where like you're cheeky. Like you smile a lot. You're probably smiling a lot. Listen to this. Oh my gosh. But it's hard for me to like enunciate my words. So somebody that's yes. gonna watch this pal. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> one is a whole number. Okay. But so, somebody that's gonna watch this pal. You guys could be from up north, and you could like smile when you hear people from south down south talk. Because for some reason, my my words is like I'm stumbling over them, and it's like I don't know. I can feel somebody else smiling, listening to this, even though I'm recording it. Somebody here is very cheeky. You could have a lot of freckles. Somebody here has locks. Somebody here could wear glasses. Um, but you're very cheeky. But it's a heavy emphasis surrounding like. Um, Being okay with being by yourself, being secure with yourself and your own ideas. I would just leave it right here because I feel like a lot of you guys are intuitive. Somebody here is definitely an air sign or a Pisces. Somebody could be a Pisces, an Aquarius, or a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn watching this. And your energy is so big, bro. It's like, let me zoom into these cards so y'all can see them better. Y'all see them like that? Okay. Boom, goes the dynamite. So, with this world card, what I'm getting for you guys, it's a real heavy emphasis surrounding, like, you're one with everything. Everything is you. And I feel like there needed to be some attunement. There could have been some people, places, and things that God says that you were making your God, that you need to be removed from those things to be reminded of who gave you your power. Some of you guys could have recently felt like you was humble by God and a past experience. Because I just started noticing, like, there's a flame by You could be a fire sign. Aries and Sagittarius as well. All the signs, I guess. It don't matter. But because we have, like, flames back here. But it's like some of you guys were isolated. But it's like <laughs> I heard somebody's personal hell. You could feel like God is putting you through it, honey. You could feel like God is putting you through it. And her shirt says, holy golden path. Holy golden art pad, but I thought it said holy um golden nature golden, and then I heard I seen generational, but I was I thought it was merged together like golden and generational as well. Where and I'm like that don't make sense. Now look closer, and it says holy golden art pad, and it's on a high priestess shirt. So something about uh, comfortable in my skin, cozy. Somebody here is definitely a Virgo. Some of you guys, it could be a relationship that you continuously kept going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in. And it just got to the point where it's not going to work. It ain't work. The relationship ain't shipping no more. It's a heavy emphasis surrounding spirit needed to isolate you because some of you guys had become comfortable in what was supposed to be your personal hell. Some of you guys were accepting a challenge as like your life. Some of you guys were getting a little bit. It's almost like you. Because I heard, can you handle it? Can I go there, baby, with you? So somebody here, <laughs> you may have asked for something, or maybe there was something that God knew you was prepared for, but maybe the way you handled it was like a little too melodramatic. So this is almost like, maybe you was sent, what was that? No, I just read something in the Bible. Who the fuck was that? He had a real short story in the Bible. Curse, we was reading that Bible. Who was that we was reading about? And he was making a big deal about some petty shit. Of no, Jonah. Jonah. <laughs> Jonah. This is great. Jonah, the book of fucking Jonah. Cause that, it's like this nigga here was like saying, I'm angry enough to die. My, I, I, I just don't understand my purpose in this world. And God was using him to go deliver a message to save a whole community of people. 
At first, he chickened out. He tried to run away from his problems, and God made sure he was swallowed by a will so he could be reminded of where his strength came from. Okay, so I, I, and, he, and then to let God him know and be reminded of God's grace because God still made sure he was comfortable when the ship was in the middle of a monstrous um, sea storm. And then he was comfortable in the belly of the well. And he was comfortable when he got his ass back to where he's supposed to be. So he knew what God had to owe him to do in the first goddamn place. And it's like when... It's like he was beating himself up for no fucking reason. He was being extra hard on himself. He was being melodramatic. And then he was trying to micromanage, draw God. He was just doing the most. He was being a diva. Read it for yourself because my translations don't always be up to par. But long story short, from my interpretation, the nigga was being a diva. I feel like he was being a diva about something that really is light work. Light work. And I feel like whatever it is, you know it is, or whatever you're going through, whatever is stressing you out, it's really not that big of a deal as you're making it out to be. This is almost reminding me of when I was in a connection with this guy, and he, I was actually being groomed, but I'm going to give y'all the tea because it happens, and it's real life. And I don't, it's no need for me to be ashamed of it because, shit, you don't know till you go through it. But I was talking to this guy. He was way older than me. I was 18. He was 28 when we met. We started talking. We was working the same job. Should have been a red flag one. Because I felt like we had two, a whole lot in common. Two, I felt like we worked together. It was easy and it was fate. First of all, me not knowing any better. If a nigga work in the same place as you and it's that big of an age gap, something is wrong. Two, if y'all that much of an age gap between you and them and y'all got a lot in common, something is wrong. Three, if he that goddamn old and don't nobody his age on him, something is wrong. But I didn't know that then. But I beat myself up when I got in a relationship. And I saw how bad he was treating me when it got abusive in every way. I beat myself up to the point to where I was like, well, you should have known better. And I felt like I was deserving of it, so I put up with it. And then I kicked, screaming, and hollered because I had done so much to keep it because I was too embarrassed to say, you know what? I made a mistake fucking with somebody that everybody told me I shouldn't fuck with and I started fucking with him anyway. He wasn't shit. Instead of just being like, you know what, it is what it is, cut my losses and move on, I let the, I was holding on to this because I got comfortable in what was like a personal hell. And they could treat me like shit. I walked to that connection with confidence. I left questioning myself. I dropped out of school. Like, I lost myself in something that wasn't even fucking worth it. And when my lowest moments came, that nigga wasn't there. You know, it's like... I'm glad it happened because my daughter won't have that experience. My niece won't share that experience. My sister, damn, neither one of them damn will have, have that experience. Because when it came down to me seeing them date, I knew what the fuck to tell them not to go for. You know, and they also seen me go through certain shit, so they went out to. But I say all that to say, I remember when I was in a connection, and it got to the point to where I didn't even realize that their abuse wasn't love. I had misinterpreted it as something different. And that's what I feel like was going on for you guys. I feel like this could be being in a family where it's like, this is my mama. Yeah, but your mama treats you like shit and she been in competition with you since you first got your, your titties. Yeah, that's your sister, but she never liked you for no fucking reason. She always is mean and you love her, but she's weird. She's jealous and she don't love herself. So how the hell she gonna love you? Yeah, that's your cousin, but your cousin never liked you. If you really think back for another bitch was mean to you when you was in diapers. She never wanted to share a fucking Barbie dolls. Whatever it is, it's something where it's like you're trying to hold on to something. And it's, it can be better elsewhere. And better is when you buy yourself. Some of you guys are just now noticing that you have a lot of peace with yourself. Some people made you feel awkward. You probably felt like there was something wrong with you because you didn't fit in. Some of you guys maybe even felt like you was an introvert. And it wasn't that you were an introvert at all. You was just around a bunch of people that just didn't get it. <laughs> they just didn't have the same emotion. Some of you guys didn't even realize that you were spiritually gifted as young as you were because there was nobody around you to facilitate that growth and to speak life into you. They just called you weird. <laughs> so that's why you were isolated so you can get comfortable in your skin. Cozy. Cozy. Shout out to Beyonce. Some of you guys could be from Houston. Okay, somebody here's birthday could be around Christmas season. You could be watching this around like December at the time which I'm posting it or in spring around 420. Your birthday could be in April. December, January, October, September. Maybe November. But I feel like that you were isolated. I, I feel like in school groups, you were isolated at home. And you might have even feel isolated. Like everywhere you went, you probably felt like that there's people who tolerated you. You probably feel tolerated in a lot of spaces. 
a lot of you guys, God isolates you so you cannot be afraid to take a space. And my sister tells that to me all the time. I don't know where she got it from, or but she just said, Kira, you can't be afraid to take up space. You can't be afraid to take up space. So there's a real heavy, um, heavy energy surrounding like confidence. Because I'm looking at this crown. Her crown is made out of icicles. Can you guys see that? And I'm hearing, it's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. That song there. Some of you guys, your parents could have split. Or maybe you guys are adopted. Or maybe you just didn't fit in. Some of you guys could have also grew up in, a, in an environment where people don't look like you. You know? Some of you, it's like an identity thing. Some of you guys are going through an identity crisis or something that took a huge knock of your self-esteem. Something that you were holding on to, a relationship or an environment. I feel like it was relationships particularly where you was putting so much energy into making something work when you should have instinctively knew to move around. When you started to feel uncomfortable, when you started to have felt, you know, uneasy, or maybe it needed to happen anyway because I don't make no mistakes. Maybe it needed to get you that way to the place to where you could recognize that lesson because I would never date somebody again. Who exhibits certain traits that my ex had. But I wouldn't have known what to look for in regards to red flags had I not gone through that experience. She's crying. It's raining. Her eyes red. She got on a choker. She wearing dark clothes. It's dark. This person's doing too much. Especially for them to have a crown. It's fire all around them but their crown is still on their head. So there's a real big emphasis around it. No matter what you go through, your situation has nothing to do with your destination. That has nothing to do with what you can cultivate and create. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Queen of Wands. And right behind it, we have the Eight of Swords. Exactly. Fucking Jonah energy, bro. You were being melodramatic. You feel like life is happening against you and to you when it's happening for you. And some of you guys need to take a fucking chill pill relax a little bit so you can get so you can calm down some of you guys your nerves is real bad some of you guys could be a little bit worrisome unnecessarily and you're supposed to use these situations to create something that you went through is supposed to help you cultivate new experiences to help other people so i don't know something that you create like artistically this could be like making music this could be like what throughout what i do everything that i do for you guys it's healing for my inner child. And it's also, I'm able to channel these messages because I've been through things. I'm never going to come to you guys pulling shit out of my ass. And if I don't feel inspired, if I don't have a message that's actually going to benefit you on your divine path, I don't say shit. You know? <laughs> I don't say nothing. Because if it's not going to add value to your life, I don't know that it's, it's tried, tested, and proven. It's no point in me even sharing that information for you. Some of you guys, it was just a great... Um, Establish grit in you, you know. They're telling me that this is not your um, your only form. Something about like it's like the first day of school because I'm looking at you guys graduating at the Queen of Wands. She's graduating, right? When you first start school, you don't you don't want to leave your mama. In most cases, for those who grew up with moms they care about, you finna leave. And be dropped off with these strangers and these other snotty-nosed kids with diapers, some of them. And some of them don't have diapers. And some of them loud, some of them nice, some of them mean. You don't know these kids. It's sticky, it's bright, it's colors everywhere. And they want you to take a nap on this cot, right? And that's a little bit uncomfortable just and unsettling the first day for a lot of people. You know, it's not something that you really want. But then when you get comfortable with your teachers and you finally get in the groove of having fun, sometimes that first day, that last day of school, that first day when you go home, it's a little bit shaky. Are you nervous? The last day of school, you're like, damn, I'm going to miss Mr. Ferguson. I'm going to miss my gym teacher. I'm going to miss my best friend. Damn, I'm not going to see you because I'm going over here for the summer. Or I'm graduating. It's like, damn, it was hard to go to high school because it came with so much bullshit and unnecessary competition. But now that I'm leaving, why am I getting choked up a bit at graduation? It's something like that. Something that you were... I feel like a lot of things you have been through a lot for one. And God is, <laughs> God is definitely bringing that to my awareness. But he also wants you to be aware of all things you've been through. But you weathered the storm. With all of this, she still has ice forming around her chakras and her, her crown or whatever. But it's a heavy emphasis surrounding her being able to withstand it. But she got a little bit comfortable in it. Almost to the point to where she may have developed certain ideologies. Like, I'm hearing, what's love got to do? got to do with it and then it's like well <laughs> maybe that's not necessarily 
where we were supposed to be going. God could be isolating you right now because you have done a lot of work, but maybe there's still some healing. I'm hearing um, resentment by Beyonce. So some of you guys could have came from a situation where people were cheating on you with past partners. So you need to be isolated for a little bit so you can kind of get in the groove of loving yourself. Picking yourself up, just maybe developing new interests, you know. This reading is like getting all over the place. But it's like a heavy energy surrounding. I think that the isolation that you guys have going on. It's really due to closing certain cycles regarding your perception of self, your perception of the relationships around you and how they should move and maneuver. It's also meant to sharpen your intuition. It's meant to um, bring you closer to God, creator, and also bring you closer to yourself. And also to let you bring awareness to the fact that you're not stuck. A lot of you guys are melodramatic, big Jonah energy where you feel like life is over. Some of you guys, I'll be honest, because I'm hearing, damn all these beautiful girls. They only want to see you hurt. They'll have you suicidal, suicidal when you say it's over. I don't know why I'm hearing that song. Some of you guys are trying, like, they keep having these thoughts. And God is saying, for one, it ain't going to work, so don't try it. Been there, done that. And also, it's like, you, you're meant, you're somebody. You were, you've always been that girl or that guy or that person. And you're going to leave with an even bigger impact than what you could possibly fathom. And it's like, it's reminding me of that drag race scene where Kim, she was talking to her younger self. And she was like, at times, you're going to feel like you don't fit in. Like, you're just, you were born into the wrong body. You're going to feel like that it's never going to get better. But it does get better. You're going to think about harming yourself sometimes, but it gets better. And you're going to have a life bigger and more fascinating than you could ever possibly imagine for yourself. And I see it for you guys. I see it. I see you guys having those really hard mo moments. Like, really, really difficult moments, but you guys have an old soul. What, also, some of you guys are going to remember that you asked for this life. But you need to be remembering, or you need to know that you asked for this life because you can't handle it. It's something about a test that you are meant to master. You're fated to master. And during this moment of isolation, you're meant to bring awareness of your growth. How you're meant to also do some inner healing that I feel like several people in past generations have folded and have not done certain amounts of healing. So whatever this is, we're going to see um, how are you isolating my viewers to select this reading? I don't want to make a sense, y'all. I'm going to try to clear the best I can, but it was a lot coming down. And sometimes I get to, I don't know. I don't know, Chad. I'll be trying to articulate myself. How are you uh, isolating pile number one? How are you isolating them? My viewers to select this pile. How are you isolating them, guys? Okay, we have, boom, shakalaka, boom. Okay, so we have clarity right there. Balance within self. Some of you guys, spirit is isolating you. You might listen to a lot. You might be feeling called to listen to a lot of songs you were when you were younger. Like, real nostalgic. Look, crystals, synchronicities. Your spiritual royalty, you have rank. Everybody. Da, 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 da. Oh. Yeah, you're meant to be a teacher and to elevate and to educate other people like a mass community. You're meant to have a lot of influence on a broad scale. So, there's a lot of energy surrounding. You're going to appreciate being by yourself or what this time was meant for when you finally get to the point where you really don't have that. <laughs> Some of you guys, maybe you, you hated this so, so bad. Being isolated, but it's a real heavy. And some of you guys need to be aware that some people you don't want to be in these groups anyway. You know, I do see you being on the forefront. I do see you being um, destined for some level of success regarding like fame. This is notoriety, you know. I see that for you guys, but I see you being able to influence people, but being an influencer for other people on behalf of spirit. So, and also I'm getting the energy surrounded because his wings and because he's separated from the crowd. There's a heavy emphasis around it being the leader of the group and not part of the pack. You know? So you need to be isolated so you can be able to articulate certain truths. But also so people can understand that I'm here to get on my level, I'll get on my level. You're not one of them. And I, I, I'm sorry, but it's like you want to be one of them, but you're not meant to be one of them. It's not the type of energy. You're a divine being having a human experience. And it's like you're, you're upset that you want to dwell with the mortals. But it's like 
Why would you want to? Look at all this big ass fucking energy, bro. The world core and high priestess, two major arcana. You're a big deal. That's why you're being isolated. That's how they're isolating you. And to be quite frank, you kind of need this. Your social battery dies real quick. Real quick. <laughs> like, And then you start getting irate and snapping on people. But it's because you're a spiritual being. And then these people here, you naturally feel like, oh, I have to fix them. I know exactly what you need. And then you start forgetting about what you want. That's why you get wrapped up in certain relationships, too. Friendships, romantic, or platonic. Because you do you know exactly what be wrong with motherfuckers because you know what they want is. Oh, I have that. And what I, I I know I know what that, I know what that required. I had that before. It's like when you got sick and you finally figure out a remedy to fix that sickness and you want to go help everybody, you know. But every, that's not your job. Sometimes I don't know what why it is. But sometimes God will spank your butt real bad. When God sent somebody a storm and you go try to save them from it because you don't know why the hell God sent them to them. It's like when your sibling is on punishment and you jump in front of the bill. <laughs> they still don't get that goddamn woman. Every day you're going to get told too. Noble of you, I guess. But you don't stop with whatever was coming from it and it came to them. I really, well, really, I didn't even know I'd be whooping nobody. But you get what I'm saying. You know, it's like a, something about that. Some of you guys have a Captain Savior hope complex. And some people, you're being isolated from them because that guy could be tapping that ass. And you probably don't need to be nowhere near them at that moment. You know, some of you guys probably want to help a lot of people. And you probably find yourself like, damn, I was going to do this. But then when I start thinking about doing this or buying this gift for this person, we just fell out. Yeah, because in the future you're going to find out exactly why God made it to where that relationship didn't work, why he broke up with you on your birthday, why he broke up with you before Christmas because you was going to go big on big and he wasn't going to get you shit. So it's better that y'all found out now than later. You know, something like that. But it's a heavy emphasis around a lot of connections that you were kicking, screaming, and hollering about maintaining or having. They're not worth it. You feel me? They're not even worth the, the kickback, the pushback. This is like a toddler being mad and now they're saying that you're being a meanie and it's like i'm a meanie because you can't have scissors okay you have all those toys go play with the toys you can't play with scissors i'm doing what's best for you now i'm gonna get a cheap scissors because they crying be gra be grateful to have god's discipline you understand what i'm saying where it's like no nah, i'm gonna let you kick screen hollow you'll be all right you'll get up you'll go find something more safe and more in alignment with you to go play with but those scissors, that's a no-go. Now, when you get older, you'll find there's nothing that appealing about scissors. It's just shiny right now because I'm telling you, you know it seems appealing. And you, maybe you guys need to be isolated or put in time out so you can realize, man, dang, I'm doing too much. Like when Tyler just kicks, screaming, and holler and throw a fit, and it's like, wow, I'm a meanie. I guess that makes me the worst mom ever, huh? Because I got to change your diaper. And it's full as fuck. I know you want to sit in that poop, but it's not happening. Because if I do let you sit in the poop, it's going to be a rash. Sometimes, well, not all the time, God foresees certain issues. And if you're lucky, he'll stop you from going through said issues any further. Because he already knows the outcome. And because you have his favor, he prohibits you from going through certain experiences. Somebody here is mad and upset. And I'm hearing dry eyes, clear eyes, sad, drowsy eyes. With this clear eyes, clarity. Somebody here, they eyes is red. Somebody here isn't getting sleep. Are they smoking a lot? Are they stressing about something or somebody that God is removing from them to protect them? Some of y'all are meant to be quite happy by yourself. And it's not to mean that you're not supposed to have people. Because the Queen of Wands gets many suitors. Because I heard, um, I get more head than a headband. So, it's something about energy surrounding that you're going to, I know it's not like really random, but I'm getting an energy surrounding you guys are going to always have suitors. It's not going to just be that one person. You're meant to have many spiritual connections, many soulmates, many interactions. And a lot of you guys are upset or, or, or wondering why you haven't found the one. Maybe you're meant to experience different people before you settle on one thing. You're meant to have options, right? You're meant to have a very eventful experience in life. You're meant to create a life. And some people here are put into your life just to be muses for certain things or to help you create something. Some people are put in your life so you can create a life. And that's it. You know, some of you, that's what it is. A relationship could maybe you upset about a baby daddy situation. But you need to be isolated so you can heal, so you can find your own strength. Because maybe in that connection, you lost so much of yourself. 
Maybe you're being isolated from a friend. I thought that was my best friend. What happened? Because you maybe you put your whole identity into y'all relationship and that bitch was fraud. She wasn't as real as you thought. Y'all wasn't going through no real shit in high school. Y'all was going through high school shit. And when shit got real shit, the bitch folded. Be grateful that it ended when it ended. Now rather than later. And now with the information that you have, you can now create new experiences with a better understanding. You know, you're not going to make your best paper your first day of college. You're not going to come in and write your best essay your freshman year in high school. It's like kicking and screaming and hollering about wanting graduation privileges without actually graduating. It means so much more to walk across that stage when you fucking earned it versus you just walking across that bitch. And you got to go back, you know. It's, it's, it's a big difference. It's a real big difference when you've earned something. Some of you guys are putting a lot of silly stuff and maybe it's like this isolation is going to show you or remind you of who you were before a connection, how much you were willing to do for yourself. And if somebody else cannot love you in that same capacity, it can make it easier for you to walk away. It's, it's like maybe you didn't have somebody to give you certain talks, a certain conversation. So maybe you have to go through it to get through it if that makes sense but this isolation period is really more so to be used as a period of breaks like for rest and reflection right i'm hearing shake it off because i know it gotta shake it out just like a cab on commercial line Gotta get up out of here. Okay, so that's the energy. So shaking something off, releasing something. I got to make that move for somebody who appreciates all my love. Yeah, somebody shaking something off. Got to do what's best for me. Baby gets that me and I got to. Yeah, that's the energy I'm getting. Some of you guys need to be separated from something or somebody. You're putting in isolation so you can really think about, why am I holding on to this? You know? I wrote down something in my journal. And I think will be really beneficial for you guys if I can find it. Because I was thinking about this because I, I could sense. And I, I wrote down the day too. I could sense that somebody was like challenged with letting something go. And I wrote down some questions to ask when you are tugged up on different people or relationships. And I want you to pause this video, go get something to write with and come back. Because I'm going to drop some real gems on you. And you're going to be like, hey, damn. Not you getting real noble on the bitch. Not you getting real um, fancy on me. Damn, not you getting real philosophical. Watch how these questions finna really shock you, okay? So, you need to ask yourself these questions when you were in a relationship. And this is what you need to be doing or focusing on during this period of isolation. What is the foreseeable benefit that makes this relationship worth maintaining? Okay? This basically, that means what makes this connection worthwhile? What do you see the end? Like, what is the end goal? What is the what makes it worth it? Now, if you your end goal is something that you know is not actually plausible, it's reliant or dependent on a this person changing who they are in entirety. That's a red flag, bookie. That's a big red flag because if it just sounds like this person here, just you, <sighs> basically what we get trying to get down to is are we in love or do we love the person for who they are or the idea of them. And this question is going to help you answer that. But again, the question is, what is the foreseeable benefit of making maintaining this relationship? You also need to ask yourself, in what ways do you feel supported in this connection? That's important. It's important for you to look at connections and think, damn, how is this relationship benefiting me? Everything in this universe is based off reciprocity. You show gratitude and reveres to God and he blesses you. You show your ass and he punishes you. You fuck, you get a baby in most cases. Or you get a nut. Something is created out of that. You understand what I'm saying? You cook, you eat. You work, you can, you can pay things, you can afford certain things. You don't work, you can't afford certain things. Everything in this life is based off of reciprocity. What, how are you being supported? What do you gain from being in this relationship? Have you shown yourself the same compassion that you've shown your partner in this connection? So, for instance, if this person, it's like a, if they, okay, if, you, if they did it to you, right? 
how would you react if you did it to them? How would they react if, they, if you did it? If they did it, excuse me. How would they react if you if they a lot? <sighs> I'm trying to get my words out, but they're not coming out right. Somebody here has a stuttering problem or a list. Somebody here that's watching me has a retainer or braces, and your energy is fucking up me speaking. <laughs> but um, there's a heavy energy surrounding. Like if you was to pull of them on them, how would they feel about it? Do you show yourself the same compassion and sense to when they when they make mistakes? You are like, oh well. Everybody makes mistakes. We can work on that. And then when you feel, you feel like that it's okay for them to cheat and like do all this extra shit because you made a minor mistake. Do you show yourself the same compassion that you show your partner, or is this the energy surrounding like when your partner, your friends can't make your events? Do you make excuses for them? But when you can't make their events and they get real mad and they start treating you funny, they throw a big deal. You feel like you're deserving of it. Are you showing yourself the same compassion, or are they showing you the same compassion that you give them? That's a good question to ask yourself about this relationship that you're holding on to. If the answer is no, that's a red flag, Bookie. And four, has this person explicitly illustrated to you that they value this connection the way you value them? And when I say explicitly, that means they've shown you, they've told you out their mouth, and you feel it. Don't make up no shit. Have they explicitly? Not no behind closed doors, turn off the lights. And like the candle. No, I'm not talking about fucking and humping and hit that spot and make you cry. And then you start feeling like you in love. I'm not talking about he make your, your bean jump. I'm not talking about he make, you know, make you turn on your nipples now. I'm not talking about, oh, she just got a big old booty and she know what to do with it. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how this person explicitly illustrated to you that they value this relationship on a side level with you. And if they do, how long has it been since they've done it? How long? Was it like a long, long time ago when y'all first met? Or every day this person has made a constant and persistent effort to let you know, I value you in this relationship. I value you. And how do they do so? It's not just the way, oh, they showed me they care. How do they show you they care? It's that they buy you shit after they whoop your ass? Or they let you know when you're at your worst, they're here for you. When you're at your best, they're here for you. They want to see you grow. That's how they explicitly show that they want to, they value doing this connection, how they can do this for your growth. Has this person earned the effort that you have put into this relationship or the effort that you're willing to put in this relationship? You need to be asking yourself these questions. It's important. It's important. Because a lot of y'all can, you give yourself people access to you who really can't afford to be in your space. Some of you guys need to be more bougie about who you allow in your energy. Be more bougie, be more selective. You understand what I'm saying? Do you feel respected by your person? That's a big one. That's a big one. Because they can say it all they want, but do you feel it? Do you feel like they respect you? Do you constantly have to tell this person, set boundaries with this person on a persistent basis? And let this person know shit that should be ABC one, two, motherfucking three? Don't be texting the hoes in my bed. Don't have nobody come to me as a woman. I don't, don't like I seen a video yesterday. And this girl was getting her feet rubbed in a, in a jacuzzi by some other man. Her husband walked up and he got mad. And she started telling him, you're embarrassing me. And then she beat the nigga. Like, damn. Bro, you the one in the tub, in a jacuzzi, getting your feet rubbed in front of your husband by another man. That's violating marriage. Then you violate his physical space when you put your hands on him. That's the energy of like, damn, he's, he's not respected in his relationship. She can say it all day long, but her actions, they, they opposite of that. Do you feel respected in your relationship with this person, whether it's romantic or platonic? Did this person make you the butt end of the jokes as a friend when they get around other bitches? Like, ha, 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 you know I got insecurity surrounding my acne, bitch. Why you call me a fucking moon pie or fucking nextly crunch bar in front of your friends? I don't even know these hoes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, do you feel respected by this person? If you being completely honest with yourself, how has that actions made you feel throughout the duration of your relationship? So... Not what they say. How have their actions made you feel? If you're being completely honest, not, oh, well, he apologized, so then I started to realize that I do be treated. No, 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 no. When you was in it to win it with this motherfucker, and this person was in your space, motherfucker, how did that shit make you feel? Did you feel insecure when you was around this motherfucker? Did you feel loved when you was around this motherfucker? Did you feel supported when you was around this motherfucker? Did you feel like you had to compete for this motherfucker? Did you feel like they wanted you there? 
Or did you feel like a part-time child by this motherfucker? How did you really, really feel when you was in this person's space? You have to ask yourself this. These are questions that I feel like you guys could have been avoiding or that you probably would never ask yourself had you not gone through said isolation. You understand what I'm saying? Are you proud of this person? Are you proud of even participating in this relationship with this person? That's the question you need to be asking yourself when you are connections down. Do I feel like I got to keep it a secret that I'm reconciling with you? Is it a secret? Do I feel good for still having you around? Yeah, you're doing good now, but after what? Type shit, you know? Are you happy in this person's company without being superficial? Questions that need answers. When I say superficial, I mean I gotta pretend like I don't fart as a woman. The fuck? I gotta pretend like I don't have to take shit sometimes. As a, you have to feel like that's, that's on some surface level shit. But, you know, let's be real. Like, do you have to be superficial around this person? Do you have to change your whole personality to feel like this person likes you? Do you feel like you gotta be less? Like, do you feel like this person makes you feel like you cringy? Because some people do that. They try to get quiet and make you feel like you're doing too much when you get around and like, why are you dancing? Like, we're just out to get brunch. But you're just mad because your booty don't move like water. Make me sweat. Make me hotter. <laughs> Made me lose my breath. Somebody here could have been isolated. Somebody, somebody here could dance. Or maybe somebody could have been on a dance team or in a band or a track. And somebody could have made you feel like you was doing too much because you like to dance. But it's because you can't dance. You can dance well. And that's for somebody out here. <laughs> More questions to ask. Do you feel like your connection with this person is contingent on you sacrificing your morals to be with them? All that shit, I would never... I could never, if my man shh, couldn't be me, all of them non-negotiable. Do you feel like you got to go against a lot of shit to be with this person? This motherfucker, he told you it was just you and him. You didn't call him cheating and now all of a sudden polygamy? No. And now you trying to force this shit on you and now you mad and insecure? You know what I'm saying? Something like that. Where it's like... Maybe it's like, oh, I know I want to get married, but now I'm in this relationship. We've been together. Now I'm screaming, common law, common law, common law. Bitch, that shit is commonly stupid. You sound commonly a fool. That's what that shit sounds like. When you really want to be with rice thrown on your back of your heads and shit. If that's what you want, why are you sacrificing this? Because it takes two to make the thing go right. And if this motherfucker is not tangoing with you, that shit got to go. That motherfucker got a skedaddle immediately. Do you have to sacrifice your morals to be in certain connections? And I don't mean to fuss at y'all. Some of y'all are like, damn, Key, I already know this. But that's why you need to be isolated. Because it, it takes that for you to reflect. Because sometimes we forget. And we think that shit only applies to a nigga. Let me take it to something else. Mama, I don't like when you talk to me like I'm a bitch in the motherfucking streets. But we tend to forget that just because somebody got our blood through their veins, that that don't mean that, 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 that we tight like that. We cut like that. You understand what I'm saying? Blood ain't always thicker than water. It ain't always thicker than water. Especially if they don't value your relationship the same way you do. I really, like, I'm, I, I, I want to be in my truth. But my parents are homophobic. They don't accept me for who I am, so I feel like I got to shrink. Don't be afraid to take a space. So take me as I am. Or have nothing at all, bitch. Starve. Period. That's the energy you need to have. Period. Do you feel safe enough to assert boundaries with this person? Why? Why not? So, do you feel like when you tell this person, hey, when you do this, make you feel this way, do they gaslight you? Or do they say they're going to fix it and not do the shit? Or do they make it sound like you're doing too much and going shit out of proportion? It's like when I was in the, uh, I was in college and I was walking and I was talking. These girls was having a conversation. They was repeating shit that I was saying. I just said that. It was like I wasn't there. It was, they was And I stood back. And they was walking, and I stood back for a long time, and they had walked into the building, had not even noticed that I had separated from the group. And one of them, when they did notice, she was like, girl, why would you even do that? I wouldn't even have thought to have done that. She tried to make me feel embarrassed because I wanted to see something. I wanted a moment of clarity. Something told me, stop moving. Stop talking. And they just kept walking and continued with their conversation, and half the bitches didn't even realize that I had stopped. Like, I, I separated from the pack. But that was a big deal because my voice matters. And if you can't understand why that's an issue, first of all, we women on campus. Motherfuckers get raped, 
rob trafficking is real motherfucker if it's an open fucking campus too you understand what i'm saying it's like it's it's moments like that where when i try to serve that boundary that i know hey that made me feel away what anything could happen and also i'm talking to y'all y'all like i don't y'all don't hear me when i'm speaking y'all don't notice when i walk away it's like i don't feel valued in this connection i would really appreciate it if you know y'all include me in the conversations which i something i shouldn't have been asking in the first place with somebody i considered to be my friend because i was still young but when i asserted that boundary she made it feel as though me as feel as though i was doing too much like i should never done it and that was stupid to begin with trying to belittle me for my concerns i'm gonna flip it it's like when i tell my pet, my dad, hey, you know, I do my best. I don't really like when you talk to me like that. You want me to respect you. I feel like respect goes both ways. I do not feed you. I, I, I claim y'all. Like, what, my dad, that's a big deal. The fact that he claimed all his kids. You fuck for them and we all look like you. You could not claim us if, <laughs> if you wanted to. It's like a parent saying, never mind the fact that I beat the shit out of you. <laughs> but I, I took care of you, didn't I? Barely at that. Because I remember lights being on sometimes. But okay. I guess. It's like people sometimes forget to assert these same boundaries or ask yourself these same questions. Depending on who it is. Grandma, I love you. But every time I come around, you don't have to tell me that I gained 10 pounds. Do you feel scared to assert boundaries with these people? T.T., you cool and all. But you nosy as fuck. And your marriage sucks. So worry about that. Do you feel scared to, to assert boundaries with these people? How is the holidays going for you? Are you nervous when it's holiday season? Because you have to go around said people? Ask yourself this. Mm -hmm. See, I told y'all I'm going to go in. Yeah, I'm in my psychology bag. Period. Okay? Does your partner openly express their love for you? So, for some of you, I heard sibling rivalry. Do they act funny? Do they integrate conflict between you and your siblings? When they get around people, do they talk about the good things that you do? Or do they spend time talking about how you stress them out? When y'all go out, do they take pictures with you and post y'all relationship? Or do they tell you they ain't with their internet shit? But they'll add a celebrity and post a celebrity on their story telling their celebrity that don't fucking know that they exist. Happy birthday. But they ain't with their internet shit. Uh, do they openly express their love for you? Do they got another Instagram bitch on their phone? As they lock screen? And it's not true. Do they openly express their love for you? When this friend gets around people that don't like you, do they come back and tell you so-and-so was talking about you? Or do they say, I don't fuck with so-and-so because they said this about you. This is what I said to them. When they get around people, because sometimes you can have, I don't know, some people here, they can have friends with people who they ain't friends with other people. Because me personally, I don't give a fuck. You know, just, you know. I can, You can talk to me about friends that I don't even care about. And or don't like or whatever. I'm still not going to make you feel like you have to pick a side. I'm not going to be biased either. That's the type of person I am. But some people can't be that way. But does this person keep it real when they get around bitches that they like? They don't like you? That they fuck with you? Do they stick up for you? Do you feel as though you have to keep your relationship with this person a secret? Why or why not? Do, do people that love you, that you don't love you, do they not like this person? Usually, that's a red flag. If everybody that loves you genuinely does not like this person. A lot of the times, it's something that, about this person that you're refusing to see. You understand what I'm saying? Or, you done been through some shit. You done told everybody. And now you feel like you gotta sneak and get back with this person because you don't want to look stupid. Well, if you feel like that, then you're probably in the wrong connection. Red flag. Okay? Keep it real with your fucking self. Keep it all the way up in with your fucking self. Do you feel like you are growing in this connection? How or how so? Because somebody here can grow in a connection, but it's at the expense of pain. It's like, yeah, I learned I learned how to be a good one. I learned how to cook, but you learn how to cook because motherfuckers told you you going to leave for the bitch down the street that make hush puppies and fried chicken. That's why you learn how to cook because you find out he was like the bitch pictures with a big booty. They know how to make seafood gumbo. So that's not really you growing in this connection. That's really you just adjusting to your toxic environment. That's a comedic but sad example. But this could also be somebody like where it would be a red flag. Is if like maybe you grew from being where your parents like, yeah, my parents were excessively hard on me about, you know, my grades, my performance and my appearance. But I am a skinny queen. I'm a skinny legend. I'm not fat. And it's like, well... Let's think about the psychological effects. How did you grow in this connection? 
what was the the process of breeding such growth? Bring awareness to that as well, because yeah, you can be like, oh well, I'm not fat if I, because nothing wrong with being heavy. Same for said. Some people here, somebody here has a really like a body image thing. It's like, well, um, I went to school and I graduated, but you graduated for something that you didn't want to go to school for. You didn't really enjoy college, and you had self esteem issues, and now that has made you hyper, uh, per, hyper perfectionist. If that's even a word, I'm not a doctor, but that's the energy I'm getting. It's like, how did you grow? You have to ask yourself, like, for relationships that you were in, questions you need to be asking yourself right now is, well, is this connection inducing growth with me? Or how is it? Is it because this person made me feel insecure and they sent me down a rabbit hole to remind myself that I'm a bad bitch? How am I growing? Because sometimes we do say growth and then we forget what triggered said growth. And then we go back to these things and then we have new lessons and new homework assignments and new baggage. So it's important to ask if you're growing and how you're growing as well. Um, do you feel like this relationship is supported by your spirit, guys? So, are you if you're a reader, are you scared to pull cards about this relationship with this person? Do you feel like God touches your money or your stability or takes away your peace or be all up in your dreams about this motherfucker? When you go back around now, shit like that you need to ask about. Do you feel like this connection with this person has a certainty of being long term? Not a potential, a certainty. A certainty. Like, I could see myself... Having, you know, you know, the picky fence, like it could actually happen. Like this is something that could actually happen. This, person. this is a friend that would actually help, like actually be my children's godmother, godfather. I could actually see that for this person. I could actually see myself growing old with this person and being happy. You know, this is somebody I would actually introduce my children to. If the answer to that shit is no, why are we sitting here throwing a fucking fit? Why? If you don't plan to be around this motherfucker, why do we care about being in this group? Do I see myself even care about these people? Let's, if it's real platonic, let's keep it a bag. Some people here are major people pleasers. Pleasers. I see some serial people pleasers out here. Okay? Am I going to be at this fucking job for the rest of my life? Hell no. Nah. So why do I care about these bitches liking me? These bitches don't like me. They want to fight me. So, and, and they ain't going to do it. Somebody here needed to hear that. I don't know who, but somebody needs to hear that. Okay. In what ways are you banking on the potential of this person's growth? And you be real, you know, because I feel like by now you should have a, you should have caught yourselves right now. Well, he really not gonna really do that. If you writing this down with me and you you breaking this shit down, or you really going through the work like I asked you to, and if you ain't got a pen by now, shame on you. Hope God pop that booty. And you should get a pen now. But by now you should really be like, damn. Okay, a lot of this shit. He, this this person here, they've never shown me that they are exhibiting what I need. Wow. It's like, I thought this person would do this, but it's like, I'm not even love this person. It's just the potential of this person. I know that God has something better for me. I know that I do have a best friend out there. And I feel like I can mold this person. Why would you mold somebody that's means what you want when you can actually have somebody that's made for you? Ain't that a blessing? Why would you settle for less when you too impatient to wait for the best? Why? When the best is around the corner, you just gotta wait. Why would I settle for that iPhone SE when it's an iPhone fucking, what, 16 coming out soon? 15, 16? It's like, what's the point? Why would I do all of that? Some things are made complicated for a reason. <laughs> so you can be like, this is too much. When it's God is when it's God is followed, when it's you is forced. Remember that, okay? Does this person remind you of any of your abusers? In what way if they do? If this person, even if it's like a friend, this person reminds you of like an auntie that you never got along with, why are you maintaining a relationship with this person? If this is a person that you're dating but they remind you of your ex, red flag. Red flag. If this is a friend you have or a coworker, and they remind you of somebody else that you went to school with but that bitch was mean, red flag. Red flag. You know? Does your relationship with this person feel like a blessing or a chore? Make sure you explain your answer to that though. Does it feel like that God, have you been, does it feel like this relationship is something that is strictly given to you from the angels above? Do you feel heaven blessed to be in this person's presence? If the answer to that is no, then you probably need to make some adjustments as to why you're maintaining this connection. What's keeping you there? That's the question you have to ask. Them. What is keeping you? If all these questions is like, damn, no, 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 no. And if it is, yes, it's something toxic. Then you really need to evaluate, well, what is it? 
that I'm really attracted to about this person? What do I really like? But that's something that you ask yourself after you ask these questions. Because sometimes we can exaggerate and we can really like lie on somebody else's resume and hire them for a job that they didn't even apply to. You know? Do you find yourself questioning the love this person has for you if it's required or not? Do you feel like this person values you? Do you find yourself often asking, do they even like me? If you got to ask yourself if somebody respects you, if they like you, don't even worry about maintaining the connection. Don't even worry about it. you got to ask yourself, do they even care about me? Leave it alone. Hang it up, flat screen. Okay? Would you be proud to raise a child like this person? Whether it's romantic or platonic, if you, even if you don't plan on having children, would you be proud to, to see a child mimicking this person's behaviors, even if it's a child? Would you be happy to put, if I, if I put it in reference with regards to your child, even if it's not, like, maybe you know, maybe if you're somebody that don't want to have kids, right? But let's just say, or maybe you can't have children. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, you had a kid. Would you want to be responsible for raising somebody that's just like this person? A lot of the times, we, we, um, we change where respect is. But for most people, they want to raise respectable children in his lifetime. So the type of person that you want to feel responsible for having input on raising or bringing up in this world is highly significant when it comes to what you view as respect. If you wouldn't want to raise a child like this person, chances are you don't respect this person. You probably tolerate them. But you probably don't respect them if you wouldn't want to raise a child like that person. Because something, some aspect of you says, mm, mm, not for me. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I don't think it's a good trait. I don't respect I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that's cool. I don't think that's the way to go. If you wouldn't want to raise a child like this person, then you probably don't value the relationship the way you think you do. Because that, that love that you're going to have with the child, the love that is shared between a parent and a child is unconditional. So that that's kind of that's kind of letting you know right there you don't really love said person, um, you love the idea of them, and that makes it easier to walk away when necessary, and that's going to make this isolation period seem like less of a fucking chore. When you ask yourself these questions, like, hmm, damn, actually, I'm good. <laughs> you know, actually, like, I was tweaking. <laughs> you know, actually, you know that group that you want me in clarity. Exactly, clarity, balancing the skills. Like, I'm glad I don't fit in because you bitches is weird. It's the way you act. It's the way you act. <laughs> you know, it's nothing like that. How has this connection with this person truly impacted you? Like, like, damn. I remember when I was in that connection and I was fighting to prove to you that I was worthy. When really, I arrived with the table. What do I bring to the table? Why was I proving to you what I bring to the table? And I'm literally arriving as a dinner set. I'm literally arriving at the table itself. I'm literally arriving at the table with the cutlery included. And the cups and the appetizers on my ass. Like, I'm literally the whole package. Why am I proving that to you, though? It should be heavily implied when I walk through the dirt. door. Excuse me. Because <laughs> I almost would say purse through the door. So I was merging door with purse. Um... Do you make decisions decision for relationship based off fear of losing them? If everything you do is based off, well, I don't want them to leave me. That's a lack of mindset for one. For two, that's the first implication that you're making this person your God. Because if anything is to leave you, it just means it's not serving you. Let it go. Check out my um, you versus the third party reading. There's a video, it's a clip in the front of it that I feel like y'all need to watch. For real. For real. Mm-hmm. It's a clip in there, and I really need you to watch this. Uh, it's a Tyler Perry clip. Watch it. Do you respect, feel respected by your partner and his loved ones? So their friends, do they respect you when you're around them? Because if, they, if they're loved ones, they friends and family don't respect you, but when it's the first indicator that you don't matter to this person, or they talk shit about you around it when you're not around. That's important for you to ask yourself, you know? Do you feel like this person prioritizes you at all? Do you feel like a priority of this person? If you feel like that you don't even you don't even matter to this person, then they shouldn't matter to fucking you. That's that's questions that you really need to be asking yourself, and I feel like that's why you have this isolation. That's why you're being isolated because I feel like that you have allowed allow people to be in your energy that don't deserve to be in your energy, and you're not you're not interviewing people properly. 
You're not asking yourself the proper questions before you allow people. When you put this permanent stamp on these temporary relationships, you're not you're not vetting these people properly. You're not hazing them good enough. Everybody can't get into this club. Okay? Everybody can't get in. Yeah, some cords cuts need to be cut. Five of swords. Yeah, some people need to be cut off from relationships that you've been maintaining or you've been thinking about maintaining. And I feel like you're being isolated because a lot of things that you're holding on to, again, they're not conducive for your growth. They're not. One more card, Spirit. The star card in reverse. You plan on your own top. And it's like, when I think about piano, I think about somebody, um, like, I kind of think of somebody here, I think about blindness. Because a lot of famous pianists, they didn't have their sight. So I think about somebody refusing to see the truth. But I also think about a melancholy-ass energy. I thought there's multiple ways you could play a, a piano. This piano card is in reverse. It's the Wheel of Fortune. I'm going to turn the beat around. Love to hear percussion. Something about um a lot of you guys are shrink. Yeah, it's a big energy surrounded like trying to shrink to fit in. Some of you guys need to go watch Pitch Perfect. It could be a message for you in that. But... Real big energy surrounding, like, you're, you're being isolated because you really, really don't want, you. I, I promise you, contrary to whatever the fuck you think, you really don't want to be a part of these relationships that you feel like are so important. You don't. <laughs> like, if you really think about it, you really don't want to be these bitches' friends because they don't stand for the same shit you stand on. They don't go as hard as you. They don't even care about themselves, let alone you. And you don't need to be friends with nobody or be in a relationship with nobody or maintain a relationship with anybody that don't love you the way you love you. Well, the way God loves you. You understand what I'm saying? Spirit of living God, one more card before we end this reading. Why are you isolating? Power one. <laughs> yes. Okay, I have one card. I got two. The chicken when it's running around, got to go by. Heavy emphasis is around it. Like, you guys have to open up your eyes and see things clear. It's like, once you see shit for what it is, you're not going to want to be there. So you're being isolated to save you in advance. This person on the bottom of the deck, this little pug, it looked like, man, I was tripping. Thank you for that one. God's doing you a solid right now. Don't confuse it with nothing else. So that's what I have for you guys. I love you to the moon and back and around. I'll also listen to this video reading. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. isolating you power one was super good super juicy i like this reading but i'm gonna try not to ramble as much but y'all like i did for power too i was kind of so listen well how are you isolating power two okay <laughs> um for a lot of you guys you guys could be like physically isolated like, you guys could quite literally be moved out, like, moved away from people. You could be, like, in a different city, different state. Um, uh, also, in the energy, some of you guys are stoners. I'm a stoner, I'm a stoner, I'm a stoner. But I feel like whatever this is, I feel like this solitude that you're going through, it's voluntary. I don't feel like God is self-isolating you. I think God is protecting you while you're in isolation because it's something that you ask for, something that you want, something that you prefer. Something that I feel like you thrive in. You thrive in solitude. It's a lot of things that you um, needed to release. And you're able to do so. This is, again, my favorite card in this deck. Okay? Because it, it clearly exemplifies this growth in isolation. And this card is called Solitude. So y'all are exactly in the right place. And it's perfect that this card came out. For you guys reading on the bottom of the deck, we have the Great Diviner. And we also have Let Go. 
So some of you guys, you have spiritual gifts that are being harnessed while in this isolation period, which is beautiful. Let's see. Why have you isolated my past two viewers? Why have you isolated my past two viewers? And they say, why? Why? Tell them that it's human nature. Why? Why? Because ah, we do it that way. Okay, too much. All right. What you get when you let your heart in? Whoa. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. I'm sorry to be like chicken scratch singing all in my ear. But we got the cards out. Let's see. Let me get y'all out of my cup and zoom y'all into these cards, honey. She already did have her. Somebody here could be part of the uh, Alphabet community. Greetings. Okay. Mm. How about logo creation? Something about why somebody here could be ambidextrous. I don't know why I heard that. That's weird. Random. Meaning you could do things with both hands. I know my accent. I'll be butchering the shit out of words. Um. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. I lie on me because I'm a 10. Oh, you're beautiful. You're attractive. You're talented. And some people don't need to see it. Evil Eye. You're being isolated from Evil Eye. I'm not even looking at y'all cards. I'm just staring out into the abyss. Um, you're being protected from Evil Eye. Um, you're being protected from people stealing your ideas. So you're being isolated so you can create. Okay. What's this? Hermit, Ace of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, Three Plus, and Nine of Cups. Yes. Right on the money. You're being isolated for inspiration. So. Yeah. I just got a YouTube notification. I'll have to read that later. You're being isolated to make for money. Maybe so you can make your money. Maybe you're finna get a blessing, a monetary blessing, but it's best that you had this blessing by yourself when nobody around you. Or it's like I heard an unsuspected win. In spite of unsuspected victims. So other people could be going through it right now. And you probably got a lot of money. And they probably not fuck with you. Or relationships probably didn't work out. You could have been drawn up on one. But I feel like for a lot of you guys. You've been isolated. Particularly because you have certain shit. And certain people don't need to see you with said shit. If that makes sense. So let me put an example. Some people. You don't need them to know. Like say. You have a creative endeavor that's like really talented because i'm hearing um stop asking me for shit by victoria Monet, or is it don't ask me for shit it ain't even christmas it ain't even your birthday why are you asking me for shit some people here just have a begging like energy you could be isolated in general so people don't expect handouts from you or it's like when you get put on i'm hearing i put on for my city on on for my city sometimes it's like sometimes god will isolate you right before you get blessed and you probably feel like damn it's lonely at the top but no it really is but some people don't even be around you you don't need to ride your new shit your good shit around your uncle they always need to ride your drunken uncle some some cousins don't need to know that you live in a nice crib you come home all your shit be gone some family members you don't need, they don't need to need to know that you're doing good some people it's they they like you better when they feel like you're doing worse than them. I hate to say it like that, but it's really more of an energy surrounding you're isolated. And some of you guys, people just feel like that you need help. Some people probably are committed to misunderstanding you. People probably like offer you help and assistance when you really don't need it or advice when you really don't need it. God could hide your value from people who intend to use it. So you could oftentimes feel like it's like God is hiding you, but in plain sight. Maybe people overlook you. And that could be something that bothers you. Because it's like you're holding a lamp up like, y'all don't see me right here. But it's like you're hitting in plain sight for a reason. Okay? Admiration can very easily turn into envy. And that's what I'm seeing for you guys in y'all cards. Mm. Yeah. 
You also meant to be somebody that comes out and do add a new flair to something that's already been done, something that's old and mundane. And I'm looking at these records, these vinyls, and I'm looking at this right here. Hmm. You got a copycat. Hmm. You got a copycat. You're starving somebody who's been bending if anything off of your energy. When I move, you move just like that. Hell yeah. Hey, DJ, bring that back. Somebody here is copying you. Stealing your work and portraying it there. There's a movie about that. Kirsten, what's that movie we was watching where she had that design challenge or something that worked and that bitch that wasn't her friend, was treating her mean when she was a kid. She grew up, they worked together, they was best friends. And that whole turned in her, her assignment as her own. 13 going on 30. Watch that movie. It's something for you there. You could be isolated. And people could not get your vision. They cannot understand your creative thing. Because they're not meant to be around that new uh, flair. They're not meant to. Some people are trying to steal your flow or copy you. I hate to say it. Uh, I heard these other labels trying to make another me. You're being isolated so that you could let people see where the real artistry is. Maybe it needs to be a drought. Somebody here could have been, I'm telling you, somebody here was copying and taking like, let's just say you were a country creator like me. Somebody was taking everything that you was doing and posting on their platform and they probably have a higher following than you. And they were benefiting off of it. So out of nowhere, all your technology broke. Out of nowhere, you lost inspiration. Out of nowhere, you just didn't feel like you wanted to post anymore. And all the while, it was for a reason. It's because you was starving out somebody who was needing their content. So now people have stopped watching them because they're like, you're boring. Because they have to drop from somewhere else or drop from themselves. And they're boring. So now when you start back posting, people don't know exactly where it comes from. It's almost reminded me of the Pink Friday drop. Boom. That's why she was popping up in my meditation last night. It's like the energy surrounding, like, everybody was, like, saying, oh, Nikki, you're the bad guy. But she was all posting and saying, like, she's, her whole thing is about artistic integrity. And she feels like certain artists lack artistic integrity. And that it's unfair for them to not acknowledge the work that she has put in to allow them to walk into an industry with a lack thereof artistic integrity. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, I'm just going to leave it at that. But it's a big <laughs> I don't want to start rapping the fucking song. But it's a dis big difference between her and her ops. Literally. Listen to Pink Friday is no skips. It's no bad songs. And it's like a big difference. And you start to see the information in the flow. And where people get their inspiration from. When they're in the rooms. And they're, they're attempting to write raps. You know, you start to see the blueprint. And I'm looking at you guys in this instance as the blueprint. The pink print, rather. You know, and... I feel like that you were put into isolation to maybe remix and to change something because maybe you guys are the type of people where you always are creating new things, coming out with new steps, coming out with new flares about things, and somebody here was copying you, and you were put into isolation specifically so you can go back from the, to the drawing board and do something better. And I think that's what she did in 13 going on 30. I think she went and made something better than what the girl turned in. So it didn't even matter. You know, nobody can do it like you anyway. That's the deal. That's the thing. You know? That's crazy. Hmm. This could be you getting fired. This could be like you losing like a job or a home or something like that. It's like you losing something substantial because you're meant to do something different. Somebody, this could be like a job benefiting off of your hard work. When that hard work can be could put into something that generates you all the profits. Rather than you getting like, yeah, they pay you, but you don't get to see none of your money because you always at fucking work. You know? Real heavy emphasis on entrepreneurship through a creative endeavor. That's why you're being isolated. Y'all reading is real simple. Pound one, it was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. It's like, first of all, let's establish boundaries.
Second of all, let's be clear with what we want. Third of all, let's add, let's let's vet people properly. You know, I feel like you guys are being isolated. It's not your first isolation. You're used to be isolation. I feel like you've been isolated for quite some time. And maybe it's like, hmm. I wonder what the weather is like out there. But it's like, hold on, just a little bit. Wait a little bit. You're getting a little bit impatient. But I don't feel like you're really tripping on. It's like some of you guys are making the option to stay in hermit mode. But big Virgo energy here. Because we have Virgo energy twice in hermit card practically twice. I feel like you guys are taking this option because you've noticed the growth that you have made when you by yourself. You prefer it to where you could be asking spirits to make it to where people leave you alone. And that could be why you're um, being isolated. But I'm getting energy surrounding a lot of you. I'm hearing shoe fly don't bother me. A lot of you guys are cooking up something. And I feel like something creative. And you need to be isolated in order to create this, this thing that's about to blow. Come here and this place is about to blow. Oh, 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 oh. That's Kesha. But she got a dollar sign in her name. Something about money. I talk about M's. M's, nigga. Talk about M's. ASAP Rocky, he got a dollar sign in his name too. Yeah, your name is going to generate you money. Something about that. Okay, let's see. Something about that. Bad bitches, yeah, I could be honest. It's a big difference. Mm, 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 mm. I ain't nothing like you, 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 and you. <laughs> that's y'all song. Big difference by Nicki Minaj. If y'all got a song, that's y'all song. Big difference. I like my honey's mm, 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 mm. Okay, what is, why are you isolating? this way it's like nah i'm good people are inviting you to parties you don't want to go people are trying to get into your business you don't want to tell them you know people are trying to make some money they're living up but you prefer you fancy your own company and i love that for you power number two let's see why are you isolating power number two This that card. It keeps like trying to hide itself, but I keep seeing it and it's flipped over. There you go. Some of you guys were kind of like, maybe you recently just got back to being isolated. Maybe you just going to get rid of somebody's ass. And you could be isolated right now to kind of protect your peace and to protect somebody's physical safety. Because somebody here, if, if you were around this person, it could get physical. Because and I say physical because it's like so I feel like you've been getting a lot of people grace and patience, but it's a real big energy surrounding. I ain't who I like. Not around here, bro. Like you don't play shit fair. You're not in the mood to be arguing with people. It's a real energy surrounding. Like I could be nice. It's only been a few times where SpongeBob then got angry, but when he get mad, he fucks shit up. You know, it's like you're a really sweet person, but people will aggravate you. And you're meant to be at peace. When we talk about SpongeBob, he's always very cheery and like his he has his his demeanor is very perky. So oh excuse me. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. But if he's irritated like this, it's a problem. He in the wrong environment. Cause he's never supposed to be that way. It's literally the SpongeBob show. So if somebody's taking SpongeBob from his who he is, his the fiber of his being, which is happiness and joy. Then it's time to move around. So it it was something that was well needed. It's a it's a break or a relaxation period that was well needed. You probably need to be around people that you love, and you and money's gonna always come. So don't worry about. It. Maybe some people know right now, money is coming to you easily and effortlessly. <laughs> yeah, some of you guys are not really isolated. You just isolated from like it's like you and somebody else that's collectively isolated from somebody from other people, and it's like I don't need clouds like <laughs> me and my bestie we gonna be all right we're gonna live a good life me and my baby we gonna be all right we gonna have a good life whatever it is it's like also something's something's going down um shout out to young jock but I, i'm getting energy surrounding maybe somebody's gonna go through some shit and you're gonna hear about it and you're gonna laugh about it but it's best it should be for you not to be nowhere near it you know Something like that. And you, it'll only be revealed to you when it happens. But it's a real big energy surrounding, like, dodging a bullet. You know? This could be people trying to maybe... Maybe you're being isolated. People who have a tendency to try to make it seem like everything is your fault. 
Maybe you were at a job and you got fired because people would make it seem like and people were already getting your nerves. Maybe you quit or something like that. Or maybe you was around certain family members but they always have problems with everything. And it's like, damn. You feeling isolated, but it's for a reason. You know, it's, it's absolutely for a reason. It's like, when you was at that job, you didn't feel happy. When you do the thing that you love, you feel happy. Money is an energy. If you're doing what you love and you love money, money will come towards you. If you love what you do, it's going to generate you income because God provides. It's something like that. It's like you're, you need to surrender and relax. That's what you need to be doing right now. Um, I also feel like it's also to paint a picture that you're doing worse than what you are. It's best for you to be isolated because people look at you as not being... You, you're going to be comfortable regardless. If you're comfortable, you're going to stay comfortable. Don't stress. But it's better if people think that you're doing bad than for them to know the truth. Maybe you guys worked like a salary job or worked a job where you was getting paid well and everybody knew how much you got paid. But now you get to go somewhere else and maybe work for yourself and want nobody know what you make. Maybe you get to be... In, maybe you was in a relationship... And no, I'm not really getting that. I feel like you guys are already isolated. This could be like a, a physical isolation. This could be maybe you had a, a nice house, but you lost that house because people really was jealous. Cause everybody knew where you stayed at. So I don't know. You just start to not want to be there anymore. So you move. But now you stay all the way out in the country. It's a nice house, but ain't nobody seen your house in the country because nobody want to make that drive. But it's better that way. And maybe you complain about being isolated, but it's better if you go visit these people so you can leave and go back to your nice shit. And for the people, I always know where your nice shit is, if that makes sense. So, yeah. That's why you're being isolated. <laughs> it's really just so you can keep certain shit to yourself. To not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Maybe it's so you can spiritually practice what the fuck you want to practice in isolation. So, yeah, that's what I have for you guys. I love you to the moon and back in right on. So, listen to be reading. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>